the ODPP. Are we um, able, the other agencies, able to support such trainings by maybe providing facilitators or any other resource that you think could be useful uh, in conducting training and so many other issues. Um, so joint training is an issue. Of course, um, we have to train. This has mainly been a training for the heads. Um, we have the, the prosecutors who are nominated because the criteria we used was two per county uh, plus the committee. So how do we go about the training of those uh, prosecutors? Um, do we have one training like we have done in Nairobi? And uh, what, 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 what are the risks? If you were to conduct a training for the almost 200 prosecutors um, that have been identified, is it going to um, paralyze work in the counties? Uh, and for that matter, then, what, what would be the best strategy to mount uh, that kind of training? I, I'll hear that uh, from you. Um, how do we enhance inter- and interagency collaboration? And what are those areas, again, in which you want to uh, collaborate? So uh, I would want to hear from you your suggestions on how to enhance interagency um, collaboration. Um, in your respective areas of work, your counties, have you identified, have you mapped out the stakeholders? Um, do you, for example, hold the MAT sessions, the multi-agency task teams, and how regularly do you meet? Um, is, it, is, it, is it a platform that you can use to enhance uh, that interagency uh, collaboration? Um, you will tell me. Uh, another issue that uh, people have discussed I think uh, this work comes with a lot of pressure. Uh, that one, everybody agrees. Uh, you're dealing with the high voltage cases, very influential people. And uh, sometimes um, that pressure, uh, some of us cannot handle it. It calls sometimes for psychosocial uh, support. Uh, is it an issue? you've thought about um, and how it could be addressed or how the office could facilitate uh, you to deal with uh, some of those cases involving pressure. And how is it that uh, if, if, if it is a very sensitive case, you can distribute uh, that kind of uh, pressure so that the pressure doesn't come to bear on an individual person. Um, the other issue that came up um, is the issue of mentorship. I know um, hate speech and electoral offenses are not our regular cup of tea. Uh, so what is it um, that we can do um, for those who have experience to mentor those who have never handled? Of course, we have the training. But even with the training, you sometimes need to hold somebody's hand so that they are able to walk uh, on their own or prosecute that, those cases for that matter. Uh, the other issue that uh, I noted uh, was uh, in relation to sensitizing uh, the media. Um, how, how, how are we going to do it? Um, you, we could adopt the model that we are using um, in the ongoing trainings for diversion and plea bargain, where whenever we train um, the prosecutors and the other stakeholders, we usually have a session where we sensitize uh, the media people in a particular region. So that is one a, that is one way in which you could you could um, you could strategize around 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 that idea. And how about Wanjiku herself? Are we going to have sessions where we are going to sensitize the public 
Uh, we had previously done it um, through the media. Um, how many of us are ready um, and willing? Like I was at Spice FM this morning uh, speaking uh, on matters of electoral justice. Uh, are you able, because there are stations within your respective jurisdictions, are you able to give talks on uh, electoral uh, matters of electoral justice, hate speech, specifically and, uh, and, and ele election offenses? Um, we'll want to hear your views uh, along that, because you have now acquired uh, knowledge, uh, you have some material that can facilitate you to at least uh, speak about this to, 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 to Anainchi. So uh, think along those lines also. Um, we have talked about, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, the KNHCR commended you, uh, saying that uh, they've realized that uh, you, you, you take into consideration human rights issues um, when making the decision to charge and maybe in the way, even in the way you prosecute. How are we able to enhance so that uh, we protect the rights of the people that, uh, that uh, we prosecute? So uh, I'll, 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 I'll be asking you, and Madam from KNCR, uh, you could also give us ideas on how we can go about it. Uh, perhaps, uh, Madam Nyaloti, also, if you have ideas around that, you can also uh, make suggestions. Um, I like that idea uh, introduced by IPOA, um, where they work with our complaints division, um, the kind of referral mechanism that they have, because Many people walk into our offices with complaints. Um, what is the kind of referral mechanism you want to adopt um, with the, our, our, our other uh, stakeholders? How should it look like? What are the sort of complaints you can, you can receive? And how would you be able to, to, to refer them? Then uh, um, another thing, I think, uh, when you talk about collaboration, one of the issues uh, that comes up is the issue about um, sharing of information. Um, and uh, um, I was pleased to learn that uh, KNHCR have done a mapping out of the hotspots throughout the country. We similarly have done uh, a mapping out. Um, are you uh, able to share that kind of information uh, so that uh, we see if it tallies with what we have and if it doesn't, um, we can add on to uh, our, our, the hotspots that we have identified. Yeah, um, I think I've talked about mentorship. So those are some of the issues that I've picked out uh, throughout the week. I know you are here. Uh, nobody has monopoly of uh, knowledge. Um, I think let's take the next few minutes, perhaps adding on to the issues that uh, I, have, uh, I, have, I have just spoken about. If you think there's an issue, then uh, after that, then we can go into um, the strategies. And uh, I think another area is uh, we had spoken about uh, having a call center. In the last elections, we had a 24-hour call center. I think two weeks before elections, uh, which worked even up to two weeks after the elections. Um, I propose that we have a similar call center at the Secretariat, which is going to be at Nairobi. Uh, we could agree uh, on a structure that uh, we have something similar, though not as high profile as that one, because we may not have the ability to man it in the, in the regions or in the counties. But we could have um, a secretariat at the regional offices 
where you can all uh, forward the issues you have. Um, ideally, the way it works is that whenever you have an issue where you want advice, um, there will be prosecutors who are experienced at any given time sitting at uh, that secretariat so that they can be able to give guidance. Um, the way we were doing it, they were also monitoring uh, social media platforms so that if any issue arises, they communicate immediately with the relevant uh, county or uh, uh, sub-county so that uh, the matter is picked up and the investigations are commenced. So uh, it's just along, 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 that, along, that, along those lines that uh, I want you to make contributions. So I invite, um, I invite you, I think this is now a working session, Musikai uh, sana. Get your brains uh, uh, active so that uh, we come up because there are things we will need. Do you think you will need uh, uh, some gadgets to facilitate this work? Do you, for example, have scanners in your stations? Are you able to scan the files that will be forwarded to you and send them uh, for advice at the shortest uh, possible time? Because uh, this work, we intend to do it in a very consultative manner. So there'll be a lot of communication back and forth. And uh, the means of communication must be there. People have to have internet. People have to have perhaps data. Um, you have to have scanners. Uh, if your phone doesn't have a scanner, perhaps this is the time to acquire a phone that has a scanner. Uh, because sometimes I'm forced to scan a file using my phone if it is very, if it is very urgent. Maybe it is over the weekend. Maybe it is late in the evening. The people I have in the office have gone. So think along those lines. I had suggested that uh, in the regions, they could buy for us some small iPads, uh, the cheap ones, so that we can use those ones even to scan. Um, even if you are at the field, you are maybe uh, somewhere where you, are, you don't have those facilities. You can be able to scan something very quickly and forward it to the secretariat. That is the, the head speech and electoral justice division in Nairobi. And get the kind of advice that you want um, as quickly as possible. I invite your, your views. And uh, there is someone who is recording the, the issues that uh, you will be raising. Um, and we'll also take the, the strategies that you'll identify. Yes, madam. Um, somebody help me with the... Only what was retired. Yes, you will retire now. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to speak a little bit on uh, complaint management and its role in the, the criminal justice system and how we can, we can uh, improve it. Uh, due to the Due to the nature of our work, at times we get overwhelmed. As a result of that, uh, complainants may not feel that they have been treated nicely. And complaint management does not start at the point they make the complaint, but it starts with how the complainant was handled. And a lot of the complaints are not as a result of the delay but they feel that they were handled in a manner that was either condescending. Mary, isn't that true? Most of them have an issue with how they were treated. Now I understand we deal with very, with different people, with different uh, personalities, but I would always encourage you to ensure anyone under you treats the complainants with dignity, listens, and please find a way of escalating, having the matter escalated within the station. A lot of these complaints will, will go away. The second is 
there is uh, within the referral mechanism, we have a simple document that allows you to fill details and forward it to the, to the appropriate uh, agency. Uh, I'll work with uh, Madam Mary of uh, finding a way of availing it. But it would be always good whenever there's a complaint, just give it due time, see if it's accurate. And if it's not, make sure you give a, a, a response. When uh, you get requests from the complaints department, please, please respond because it will prevent it from, from, from getting uh, messy. Always make sure that you have some time set aside to allow complainants come to talk to you on how they feel the case is going on. At times someone will say they, they just released the suspect, yet the suspect is out on bail. They just need to be told that. At times they'll say there's police interference on the matter, the police officer is not, going to, is not coming to court, and maybe there was a transfer. When you're able to escalate that, then you will be able to adequately uh, resolve um, the issue. On the aspect of uh, the call center, that is, that is very laudable. Um, if you're going the way of a call center, you need to think about who you're going to staff. What cadre of people will be in the staff? How many shifts will you do? And who else needs to be on standby to support? Because if someone calls the call center and says they are being attacked, and you're not able to get someone to respond, then you don't need the call center. They can come within working hours. So you have to now coordinate with the other agencies and know should there be a challenge in what area, who is the connection? So you, you really need that. Um, additionally, you need to now see what else is happening. For example, I IPOA has its uh, elections management uh, committee, and now we've li linked up with Kenya National Commission's election hub so that we can be able to now have a more focused approach. We don't want to come this day, we are training ODPP, the next day, Kenya National has come. So we also need to think of a way of how we are going to approach that. Then I come back to the aspect of se sexual gender-based violence and election violence. We have to admit there are many election offenses, but one of the most difficult ones or ignored is the issue of election violence. And we have to remember that election violence is a form of voter manipulation. It can either exclude people, they are targeted assassinations and everything. So you need to know as you're doing the election offenses, what strategy will you use? How will you establish that this case is actually linked to elections? What are the different ingredients? Because one of the, I've worked in investigations and you find at times an investigator just starts an investigation, but they really don't know what they're going to prove. That's why you're always finding the, the, the gaps. So you really need to work with the investigation agencies. Some are lucky to have lawyers uh, who join as investigators. So you know when you get a file, you're already thinking, these are the ingredients I have to prove. But not everyone will think like that, yes? If someone is dealing with identity, the person will be able to cover everything. Guys to prove identity, people to prove cause of death, and things like that. Another thing we also really have to work on is now the documentation and the role of the medics during the elections because they have to document the evidence to help build the cases. And then now the most keen thing that we also have to look at is the after effect because we'll be subjected to something called public interest litigation because we have our role. So how can we get ahead of them? One of the things I would suggest is a multi-agency approach to have like a thematic investigation. We might not be going against one person, but if we're able to establish, indeed, this happened, these were the challenges, these are the interventions we've uh, undertaken, and it's, it's in the form of an inquiry. 
we might be able to now do a post-mortem because now there'll be the naming. You know when you name people and we shame them, they will not be able to do that. And they will not be able to hide and start saying that the system is corrupt and it's them who are corrupting the system. So we really have to think about how to get ahead of that. Thank you very much. Naming, naming, and shaming. Um, a good idea. <laughs> I don't know who names and who shames and where you shame them. Uh, it, it is interesting. There's, a, there's someone over there. Maybe somebody could take this island. Thank you, Mr. Kemo. Uh, mine is uh, a concern. I addressed this concern uh, in another forum. So I would like to raise the same concern. Uh, first of all, I would like to know whether we are going to the elections as observers, because uh, it's not clear whether we will be going there as observers. And if you are going as observers, it means that we'll have to stay uh, the whole night, perhaps maybe. So that is uh, that will now inform us what gadgets we'll be using, if we are going as observers, and what will be what we'll need uh, during that time. Uh, the concern that I had is about security. You have said that um, you have already mapped some hot spots. Uh, we all know that uh, there are areas where which are hot spots. So what, what uh, preparedness has the office uh, done or will be doing or intending to do in regard to those uh, prosecutors who work in those hotspots? And that uh, should also include if there is need for evacuation or anything else. Valid issue. Yes, uh, Emma. Um, my name is Emma. I'm a prosecutor in Eldore Town. I want to raise an issue that I've noticed since the beginning of the year. We've been receiving charge sheets that we charge with. Uh, I'll give two examples. There's one that came in as grievous harm. But when you read the complainant statement, the locals beat him up, and they're beating him up, telling him, Utarudi Kisumu Kiwa Maiti. You know, Utaju Apani was in Gishu County, Utarudi Kisumu Kiwa Maiti. That was one. Then there's another one that uh, came in as creating disturbance, and the, the accused was a tenant. The complainant was a landlord. So the complainant goes to ask for rent, and then the accused, the complainant is not a native of that area. So the accused goes like, Unakuja kuitisha rent. Unajua hapa ni wasingishu county. Hapa siyo kwenyu. It's been a recurring trend from January this year. That's why for at a personal level, I didn't take the Linturi comments lightly. Because to the citizen of Wasingishu County, they knew exactly what Linturi meant when he said Madoa Doa. So how do we deal with such files? We can charge with grievous harm, yes, but there's this ethnic undertone to it. Um, number two, like uh, Mr. Isabokia said, we have hotspots, and Eldoret is obviously a hotspot. We all know that. Our office, we don't have security. Like, <laughs> it's just open to anyone and everyone. And when we get these files, how is our security, how is the ODPP office going to ensure our security as councils who are going to handle these matters and the politicians who, will who we will obviously have to deal with henceforth? 